Hi everyone, Dorota Palitska, international nail artist and educator here. And today we are going to be playing with some Halloween nail art. And it's actually a fun to do it, so have a preview of it in here. Absolutely awesome, and I hope you're thinking the same. Also, thank you so much guys for every like, comment and share uh, on this channel. And also for all the orders coming in and messages and the fact that you are sharing our videos all the time. So thank you, thank you so much. Let's start. Small preview of the set we are going to do it. Uh, so first of all, guys, you want to grab 217. It's one of my favorite nude colors, like perfect for this uh, base. Absolutely amazing. And the coverage is insane. Like I love it so much because you can always pull it in one layer. I would say it's a kind of medium consistency, so not too thick, which I prefer it, but also not too thin. So you can do it in one layer. Let's cook it and then paint another nail exactly the same. I have already painted two just to save you time. Um, you know, you don't want to watch me painting too long, probably. But then we will do nice and small, a slow job on the design. Just so it will look pretty because like the longer time we take for the things, the nicer they look. Okay, let's cook it. And then we've got our uh, pin, uh, index finger, middle finger, pinky we're just cooking. And this is the ring finger. I want to grab some red and here as well. Scoop of it, so my spatula. Grab the scoop of it. Just a perfect color, I think and the D-liner brush. Oh, I have banged it so strong. On the pinky, we want to do the French just the same way like we did it on the, uh, on the thumbnail. So what I'm doing first is I'm prepping my brush and I'm start to indicate where I want my smile line. So the corners of the smile line, I want them really nice and high up. Then so once I've got them, I'm almost kind of painting like a V shape. And then just color it in. Same on the other side. Okay, time for a smile line. So again, prep the brush, like make sure it's nice and decent amount of the product. I'm just gonna straighten the tip, which I have broke when I grab at the brush. There we are, this is much better. And then do the smile line. So I want it to be about one third, which means I start to curve in this place. And I love it how you can pull it, it with the D-liner brush, like really nice and deep. Color it in. For coloring it in, usually watercolor brush or the angular gel brush will be much faster, guys. That's a really nice and sharp smile line. Brilliant. Let's cure it. And then on this finger, we are going to do it slightly different. So you want at one side, you want a V shape. So again, remove the excess and do it one side in red. Color it 
color it in. Perfect, let's cook it. And do the same in here, just go opposite direction. So this is our ring finger. Okay, nice and slow. And then color it in. That's a nice blood color. Brilliant. Cook it. Okay, the French one. Where are you? Is ready, so we can take the detailer brush and the dotting tool. Black gel. And again, just grab a decent scoop of it. So clean it from the red. And start painting the next part of the design. Oh, I've got some fluff. Clean any fluff you don't want on the tip. And then let's do it the head of the bat. So right in the middle you want to do those rounded shape. And then grab the D-liner brush again, clean it from the red paint, because we had some red paint there, and pull it an outline. So black outline, all the way to the top. The same on the other side. All the way to the top. Okay, I'm gonna swap to the detailer brush now. And you want to draw the body of the bat. Okay, so just like this and then a small line. Okay, time for the wings. So you want them to start coming in from the body. And then it is almost like a triangle shape. And do the same here. We triangle shape. Pull another triangle there and join it in. Okay, and another triangle there. And join it in. I'm just going to prolong it a little bit. And then using what you've got on the head, pull two ears. So use the product which you already got in there, don't bring any more. Because you want them tiny. And then let's cook it. Okay, time for this one here. 
so let me see what we've got. We've got this will be a ring finger and this one. Okay, so we should go for a contrast for some lips. Okay, let's paint the lips now. I want to grab the, the Tyler brush and paint the shape of the lip. The easiest way to do it is to kind of do it M shape. I would say letter M, like try to paint a letter M. And then start coloring it in. Nice and large ones. Okay, do the bottom. So leave lots of empty space and then do the bottom. Add some volume there. And now let's do some blood. So what I'm doing straight away, guys, I'm just taking a drop of the black and adding it into my red. Just so I can have like a very dirty red. Okay, and add this blot in there. Make it nice and droopy. Otherwise, it wouldn't stand out like um, on the lips. Okay, we can also add the same drops right on the top, like a drips. So hold it, hold it, kind of shake it, go to the top. And look how awesome it looks that mm, we mix those uh, both colors. Perfect. Okay, it's so a time to freeze our design and move on into the other one. So I'm gonna grab some black. And get some spider webs in there.
nice and slow. Again, the slower we paint, the nicer results we get. Okay, rich. Do the same in here. <laughs> I knew it, it will happen. I just had the brush at the wrong angle. So clean it. So I want to use as I want to use as flat brush as possible. If I will be painting with the very straight brush, it will make the things really difficult. But obviously I cannot pull it nice and flat because my index finger is disturbing me. And I think for this reason, the snails will go. Um, unfortunately, they will go because uh, I want to do a little bit more of the advanced snail art and I cannot be as precise as I want. Okay, one more row. Perfect, let's cook it. And then go back to our lips. So what you want is you want to paint some teeth in there. <laughs> and the teeth are gonna be white. So we are gonna grab the white gel. Just a small scoop of it. Then let's do the teeth. So we've got one. Second one. And of course, the spiky ones. Some nice, decent triangles there. Clean the excess of the product. 
so you can go more pointy. And then let's freeze it. Perfect. Next step, we want to go into the um, black. So just pick up the black and then let's start adding the detail. So first of all, we want to go around the lips. Like as thin as possible. And then also where we've got the teeth. Get some vein like through the lips. And another one in here. Okay, let's separate the teeth. So, <laughs> nice triangle shape. You could also paint it um, the opposite way. I just thought I might be maybe more precise doing this way. Tidy up the bottom. And then on the side, Okay, outline them on the bottom. And outline the blot. Okay, freeze it. I want some drips in here as well, so I'm just pick up my very dirty red and we are gonna do some drips.
Okay, three. Just for a nice balance, we are going to do three. Okay, we need to grab uh, some white and just do a couple highlights on the lips. Just to get this kind of pop art look. Okay, brilliant. Let's cook it. This one will be almost ready. This one almost ready. And we have to do a couple drips in here. Okay. So again, I'm just grabbing the scoop. The more you've got on your brush, the easier it is actually. I had not enough on some of it. So the more you've got, the nicer blob you get. Oh, this one is just a perfect one. Again, I'm trying to pick up a blob. Couple dots. On this one, I'm just going to add a black line because it's too, too lonely. <laughs> Brilliant. Black in here. Decorate with crystals. So for crystals application, I'm just going to use a base gel. Put a small drop of it. And we've got those crystal mixes. So that's what I will use. And on this one, I want to go pretty large, I would say. So grab a decent amount of the base gel. And then pick up some crystals. So what I've got in there. This is actually too big. Okay, so medium. We are gonna go medium. One large in here. And then we will just go smaller and even smaller. Get them nice and straight and cook it. Okay, I also want um, 
something in here. So we are gonna do a couple crystals just in this corner. But this time I'm just picking up the smaller ones, like the smallest one I can find in here. Because you are working on the corner, you don't want to add too much bulk into it. Yes, I quite like it. I actually really like it. Don't go too close to the corners because um, it will give you really bad bulk. And then, because the things don't like to be lonely, <laughs> I need to do something in here, even if it's just a one crystal, just for a contrast, like um, I find that the things looks much prettier there. And same in here, just to keep the things simple, we are gonna slap a crystal actually here and maybe there. And that was fantastic idea. <gasps> Actually more. I love that. I do really love that. Perfect, let's cook it. <laughs> so again, you usually best off to do like one, three, try to do it irregular, like kind of uh, uneven numbers. That's how you call it. Okay, so let's get three crystals here. Here is lonely one, two, three. So on the top, I could easily add a bigger one. Oops. And then smaller ones in here. Cook it. <laughs> That's okay. Just don't lose them because we could do so many different sets out of them. They are so pretty. And here, okay, caviar beads. Okay, so I'm just gonna move those crystals and tidy up after this video, guys. But we want to grab the caviar beads. And we've got different boxes. So we've got boxes of the large caviar beads. And what I want to do with it is just slap a couple here and there. Because what they do, they, mm, they can get a really beautiful transition in between crystals mm, to don't make them this rough. Okay, so just nice, squeeze them in. And one more. Perfect, let's cook it. Brilliant. So here I've got also much smaller caviar beads. Nice and careful to don't drop them. <laughs> Base gel. And I'm just gonna slap them in here and there. So not too many, like again, like only three. If you pick up too many, just separate them on your mixing palette. I have added a couple in here as well already. So I'm just adding a small one in the middle. We've got a couple in here, so again, the smaller ones to get a nicer transition. That's just too much base. The 
This one is ready for the top coat. This two are ready for the top coat. And the last one, don't hide from me. Don't hide. We just need three of them. One. Two. And the third one. Sometimes it is actually hard to pick them up because you want only a single one. There we are. Let's cook it. Take away my brushes from the light and then we can top coat the thing so I can show you the final look of the set. I think it turned out actually fantastic. And I hope guys you're feeling the same if you do hit the sh Oh, those crystals don't like me today. And that's you feeling the same. And if you do hit the share buttons, pretty, pretty, please, so the others can see it as well. Oh, this one, where are you from here? So I had not enough base gel to secure this one, but the top coat will do the job. So if, if the things like this happen to you, just pull it with the top coat. Make sure the things are nice and pretty. Check how the light is reflecting on your top coat. And then let's cook it. Top got this one. So I'm trying usually avoid the top cut on the crystals so they don't lose their um, cuts. And you can do it with the small brush, uh, especially around the cuticle area. It is going to be much easier. And then if you've got any crystals, again, you have to like smooth out the top coat because it doesn't look too, too pretty. Go around the crystal. And here is a tip. So quite often I would go with my brush even like this to make sure like the caviar bits are top coated and the top coat runs against the crystal. That will prevent them coming off. And the last tip. And those crystal boxes are available on our website as well. So those are the other products we have used. Like, And if you don't have it, guys, 217 Flower Garden is called. Uh, it is an absolutely amazing color. You could see me applying it in one coat. I use a lot of it in a salon because it's so easy. And my clients love this color, even on its own, uh, without of any mm, designs. I make sure I have no fluff in there. And then... Let me sh show you the entire look all together. Okay, so we do have, let me tidy up my mess. <laughs> we do have, that will be probably a ring finger. Do not touch your top coat too early. That's a usual tip. Then we've got the middle one. Yeah, it's actually very cool together, pinky. I love the, um, the bat nails. You could just do entire set like this, like pretty nice and uh, salon friendly design. Uh, you don't have to go as far as painting the lips. I just always like to show you kind of different things. So basically from this set, you could create a three different Halloween style nails. Uh, so all of them like painted red and two like the side fringe there we are that's what we have created today they look absolutely fantastic i love how the light doesn't reflect on the top coat um, that's usually how i take the thumbnail pictures as well and the sparkly crystals awesome i'm sending you huge glittery hacks and looking forward to seeing you in the next video bye